Florida continues to wage war against facts and information while engaging in censorship. Great. Uh, according to the Daily Beast, Florida said that it has rejected a great deal of math books submitted by publishers in part because they contained what they say were prohibited subjects, including critical race theory. Now, if you are wondering what critical race theory has to do with math, I'm there with you because critical race theory is not and has never been part of the K through 12 curriculum. It's not in your math books. <laughs> Nonetheless, the Florida Department of Education announced on Friday that Richard uh, Corin, the outgoing commissioner of education, approved an initial adoption list of instructional materials for math. But 41% of the submitted textbooks had been rejected, most of them in elementary school. The math books, the department said, were rejected for this subject matter. Here's what they said on the website, quote, reasons for rejecting textbooks included references to critical race theory, in inclusions of Common Core, remember that, and the unsolicited addition to, of social emotional learning in mathematics. So we'll get to that. When it comes to education, other states continue to follow Florida's lead as we continue to reinforce parents' rights by focusing on providing their, their children with a world-class education without the fear of indoctrination uh, or exposure to dangerous and divisive concepts in our classrooms. It's funny they talk about division. That's literally a part of math. Division. Dad joke of the year. Uh, okay. <laughs> but seriously, though, I, it makes no sense what these people are doing. A war on information, literally. Uh, all right, so now, although the department described the textbook review process as transparent, it did not mention which textbooks had been rejected or cite examples from the offending passages. So basically, we're going to ban the textbooks because they have horrible stuff in it, divisive stuff. Can we see some of the examples of the divisive stuff that you're talking about? No. No, you can't. You can't. No. Oh, all right. Well, there we go. Uh, now, it... Governor Ron DeSantis put out another announcement as well, uh, saying this, It seems that some publishers attempted to slap a coat of paint on an old house built on the foundation of Common Core and indoctrinating concepts like race essentialism, especially bizarrely for elementary, uh, elementary school students. What does he even mean by race essentialism? The fact that there are, what, different races? And I... I doesn't make any sense. Uh, and, and do they have any examples of this happening? No, of course not. Now, I mentioned earlier social uh, emotional learning. So now up until recently, this was a fairly uncontroversial thing. And you're going to see why. Um, now, it's basically defined as a curriculum geared at helping students manage emotion, develop positive relationships, and make good decisions. Well, that sounds lovely. Uh, in fact, one example um, in the Washington Post is Minnesota's Anoka Hennepin School District. Uh, elementary schools focused on themes such as respect, empathy, gratitude, kindness, honesty, courage, cooperation, perseverance, and responsibility. And they would do so each month. So I guess they'd have a, a, you know, a, a class or a workshop on it or something like that. Uh, great or a lesson. Now, students also learn how to ask for help and spot someone having a bad day so that they could intervene and maybe make their day better. Okay. Well, again, that sounds lovely. Overall, social emotional learning seeks to treat children as human beings with feelings, life goals, and even traumas, not just as students learning to write essays and solve math problems. Okay, that, that sounds great. Who could possibly have any sort of problem with that? Again, I, I like all these things. These are wonderful. Oh, of course, who would have a problem with that? Conservatives. Uh, in fact, an Indiana Parents Facebook group warned that mindfulness 
which was another thing taught somewhere else, uh, that is part of social and emotional learning, happens to also be a tenet of Buddhism. They said Christian parents should be aware of what is happening. Mindfulness. You better watch out for mindfulness. That is the path to hell. As is downward dog. Remember, th these are the same kind of uh, uh, people that say that yoga is a way for the devil to get inside you. It goes right in the rear when you're doing the downward dog. These people are so incredibly scared of any and old ideas that are not their own, and even ideas that are their own, that, you know, sound good to normal people. Again, uh, what, what is it, some of the stuff that Jesus taught? Turn the other cheek. Give all your possessions to the poor and the needy. You know, because the whole rich man can't get through heaven, can't, can't get to heaven. Something about the squeezing a camel through the eye of a needle. They forgot about that. They forgot about all that. Any of the positive stuff from their religion, they have completely forgotten, uh, cast by the wayside, cherry-picked, and have basically used religion, their own religion, as a cudgel to come after anyone else. It's um, insane. Just insane. Uh, there's more. In Utah, they also tried this. The Canyons School District in Sandy, Utah, south of Salt Lake. Uh, city began a formal emotional, uh, I'm sorry, a formal social emotional learning program just a few years ago, aiming to help students develop character traits of resiliency, empathy, respect, and kindness, and skills such as emotional regulation and goal setting. Well, again, wonderful, wonderful. I love all those things. Those sound great. So obviously somebody had to come in and ruin it. <laughs> One mother uh, became concerned that she was going to learn objectionable things and then went through it and detailed 25 pages of objections. 25 pages. Among their concerns, because she had teamed up with a, uh, another, other parents, the curriculum included narratives of white power and white privilege, which teach students that some people experience power or privilege based on race, gender, or class. That is object uh, objectively true. Rich people have lots of power based on their class. You, they're saying, oh, classism doesn't exist. No, rich people do not get treated any differently than anyone else. Really? Are you are you very are you sure about that one? Really? Because I I've got a million examples of rich people being treated better. A lot of them include Donald Trump being treated better than average people than average working class people. Oh, but there's more. Yeah, race obviously, gender. Oh no! Uh, it, look, uh, obviously, uh, Susie, you know, lost out to the job to Bobby not because she's a woman. But because she's a woman and has babies and, and periods and stuff, and we didn't, we didn't want to do the company, didn't want to deal with that. But it has nothing to do with gender. It has nothing to do with that. Okay. Uh, now, they also said the curriculum encouraged students to defend the ideologies of gay and transgender issues and sought to turn children into social justice activists. And those are all good things. They also objected to a lesson urging students to disrupt and to challenge attitudes that make bullying and harassment socially acceptable. The term they disrupt, uh, or I'm sorry, the term disrupt they wrote, quote, is often associated with movements like Antifa and Black Lives Matter. Oh no, Antifa, Black Lives Matter, disrupt. You wanna talk about censorship? That right there, censorship, you're kidding me. We can't use the word disrupt. That's politically incorrect language. Wow. And by the way, speaking of disruptions, didn't the Capitol rioters 
try to disrupt the certification of an election? I mean, when it comes to that disruption, they seem to be totally on board with that. But when it comes to, I don't know, peaceful demonstrations against police brutality, and again, I'm talking about the peaceful ones, which again, overwhelmingly peaceful when it came to Black Lives Matter. Nobody defends any of the riots and the violence that had happened. There's no one out there defending it. No, no. Uh, it, it, again, the ridiculousness, right? Um, but apparently it's only bad if other people do it. But if we do it, if we do cancel culture, if we do uh, censorship, if we do, uh, you know, a political correctness as a right winger, then that's totally fine. But you can't do it. So now look, um, that social emotional learning, that is apparently now conflated with critical race theory. It's not critical race theory. It doesn't matter to them though. Facts don't matter. They're banning these books and lessons anyway. Because of course they are. And DeSantis is going further. Uh, he's actually expected to soon sign into law something called the Stop Woke Act that codifies this executive order, but goes further, affecting not only what happens in schools, but also the labor practices of private companies by restricting how they can promote diversity, equity, and inclusion. Oh, so now you're for regulation. Now you're for big government stepping into businesses, but only to stop what quote unquote wokeness. Are you stop this assault on business? For them, assaulting business is making them pay their taxes. But for the right, they can go after and literally tell businesses exactly what to do, who they hire, what kind of uh, inclusions or uh, you know diversity that the state wants. And it's totally fine by them. They don't see any sort of contradiction to what they consider to be freedom. I mean, this is... 1984. This is the censorship. This is big government. And where are the free speech warriors? Where, where's Dave Rubin? Where's Dave Rubin? Oh, I, I'm sure his brain is still in recovery mode. I'm taking all those high level ideas. What about Glenn Greenwald? Where are you, Glenn Greenwald? You used to be a big free speech guy, right? You claim to be. Uh, well, what's going on? Where are you? Oh, they're on the side of conservatives now. And specifically conservative money. I mean, somebody's got to come to your sub stack now that the election is over and most people aren't watching politics on YouTube anymore. Look, the most online people that you can meet are on the right wing. You want easy money, you become a conservative online. You got the audience. All you have to do is rant about woke culture and ideology and against gay and trans people, even if you are a gay person or a trans person. In fact, you get a bonus for going against those communities for part of it. Then you rant against Antifa and BLM. If you go from left to right in order to chase an audience, you get money and you get that audience. But if you do that, well then it proves that you were never left in the first place. And you're doing the work of some of the most, you know, some of the worst people imaginable. Good job. Way to advance free speech.